Hi guys, I'm just out in my garden and I'm about to plant the first seeds directly into the soil. So I thought I would show you guys what I'm planting. These are all cool weather crops. So they're things that like that cooler weather can handle a little bit of a frost. They're also usually pretty quick growing so you don't have to wait months and months for a harvest. We're gonna plant things up in this first couple of beds by the gate. This is usually where I plant my first seeds of the spring every year. I've got it all amended. I've covered it with the straw mulch, but I did top up the soil because it was probably about that far down in the bed. And what I did is I took all my old big containers and dumped it in here because it didn't have very nice soil. But now it's got some really nice loose soil on top. So those seedlings should germinate pretty well. So what are some of these cool weather crops? Well, these are things like peas. We're gonna be planting a bunch of those as well as some lettuce. I've got a bunch of different types of lettuce here that we're gonna plant because they don't mind the cool weather. We've also got spinach. Spinach really likes the cool weather. It does not like the heat. So we wanna get these things planted because once it gets too hot, a lot of these things will get bitter or they'll bolt and go to seed and then you don't have any more harvest. So we're gonna grow these things now while it's cooler out. We're also gonna start some radishes. Radishes are another cool weather crop, very quick to grow. And then also gonna plant some Swiss chard. This grows really well for me, so I'm gonna learn to like it this year. So let's see how much stuff we can fit into these two beds. So last year I had planted peas all up along the back, and I think I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna maybe not have stuff so close or have shorter stuff in front, but this is better soil this year, so I think they're gonna grow a lot better. So if I go digging in here, I wanna plant, I have some peas I got last year, these ones here. So these are a Tom Thumb Dwarf. I believe they're really short, 13 to 18 inches. Okay, maybe I don't wanna plant those because these I'm gonna save for the container. So I know these Sugar Magnolia, these ones are really tall, seven to eight feet. Okay, here, I think these are the ones, and these are my sugar sprints, and they are a bush type, so they won't get super tall, but they will be probably about that four foot mark, which would be probably a good height for here. Plus, these are older seeds, so let's get them planted. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull back the mulch all along the back of this bed. And then we'll take our peas and plant all of them, not even that many here. So we'll take what's good out of here. I think I got five seeds. These ones probably won't grow because they're cracked open. And then I'm just gonna put them one. I usually like to put them about two, three inches apart. Because these are old seeds, they might not germinate, but that's okay. And then I'm gonna plant some of these snowbird these are a snow pea so they're the flat style pea but they're really good edible pods of course and we really like these ones and these ones always grow really well for me so i think we might just put a whole bunch of these all on the back of this one here these are a nice thing to sow because they're big it's not like those little tiny carrot seeds now I will do another row of peas or two down below for like shelling, but these ones are just going to be our snacking and eating peas. A couple more here. Oops, I think I just dumped a few in the straw there. We'll see if we have any sprout later on in the year. A couple more here, and then I'm just going to go back down the row and just poke them all in. And I always like to give them a little pat just to settle the um, soil on top. I'll just, yeah, go down the whole row here. And now I am not going to put the mulch back on top either. I am going to wait till they actually sprout because I want to make sure that they can sprout and I want to see how they're sprouting. I want to make sure that that soil gets that sun to warm it up. It will dry it out a little bit more, so I'm going to have to be very diligent on watering these if we don't get rain or anything like that. We do have a little bit of rain in our forecast but I will definitely have to stay on top of watering these, especially as they just germinate. Of course, I don't want to forget labeling. So I'm going to label those first ones where the sugar sprint. And the second ones were the snowbird. Oh, 
five or so sugar sprint there and then I'll just put this snowbird one somewhere in the middle here so we know. And then all down the back of this side I have some sugar snap peas that I saved from 2022. Not sure on the germination but we'll get them all planted. Most of that row done, so I think I might do a few of these sugar magnolia ones because they are very beautiful. They get that purpley flower, and I had them think about last year. Let's just put them there again. Next up, I'm going to plant some radishes out front here. I'm going to start with these French breakfast radishes. They're really nice mild radish. We really like them. And this I'm going to use is the seeding square. I used it last year and it really helped me with my spacing that I have problems with. I really, really liked it. So I'm going to use it again, especially in these beds. And I should be able to fit two here. So I'm going to kind of wedge them in here so I can get the two. And with these ones, with this seating square, I find you really have to make sure you have a nice, smooth surface and level or else there's kind of some gaps, but that shouldn't be too bad. And then you really need to push it in. So this wouldn't really work if you have bad hard clay soil. It works all right for this. Radishes are 16, so they go in the red holes. This is probably one of my goals and I've even noticed here with seeding my tomatoes and peppers is I really just need to rein back on how many seeds I put in because most of the time they want to grow and sometimes putting in too many actually ends up I end up getting none because they just get overcrowded and don't grow properly. This seeding square does come with another couple of tools like a little dibbler and such to like poke holes but I find this works because I just really want it for placing the seeds. I don't need it for pushing the seeds into the soil. I just need it for proper spacing. <laughs> so then now I take it off and what I'll do is I'll just actually sprinkle more soil on top. The soil is really dry, you guys. I will definitely be giving these all a good, nice water as soon as I have everything planted here. Well, that's the... I had extra alfalfa cubes, so I put a bunch of alfalfa cubes in this bed to amend it a little bit. A lot of people will do that for like nitrogen. You can use like alfalfa pellets and such. You can just get them at a feed store and put those in your bed. It's a great uh, nitrogen amender. So now I want to really make sure I pat that down and we'll go on to the next one. Next, this is a new one to me. We'll try the lady slipper. Next, I'm going to try the Scarlet Globe, and this is the little tool that you get with it. So I'm going to see how well that works. Actually, that works pretty good. Sometimes I'm a little resistant to try new things, and I'm starting to learn that maybe we just need to try the things. Yes, our hands are really good tools, and I like to use them a lot. But this way it's a little bit more accurate and I can also do it one-handed. So I planted a couple more squares of the radishes. I have this crimson giant radish as well as this round black Spanish radish. Let those grow there. This little patch right here at the front I want to actually keep open because I want to plant some flowers there and have a nice little flower kind of area as you walk into the garden. So now what I've done is I've actually removed all the mulch from here because when I'm planting in rows I find it's fine just to move the mulch away but with using the seeding square it's a little it's a lot more difficult. So I'm just going to remove it all for now. I've set it aside and then as everything sprouts I'm going to remulch it all. So we've got all the radishes and then peas on this side and over here you can see I actually have the um, chives I planted last year and they've come back. Those would be nice there and the peas down the back here. So right here, I'm gonna plant some spinach, I'm thinking, really enjoy spinach. So I'm going to check my chart. 
I'm trying to do things properly and it comes with this chart. So it's saying spinach, I'm going to do yellow, nine holes. So that will be good for here. And this is the Monstro de Vivre So it is actually a big spinach. So I'm definitely going to need the space. I think yellow should be good. So I've actually found that this is very helpful because really you can just kind of scoop it into the bag and then you get all the seeds on there and then you just tap them in. I'm trying to put one or two per hole depending on your seeds. If I have older seeds I will put a couple more and some things can you sometimes get away with two spinach plants growing here maybe that'd be okay so let's try that. And we'll do another one down here beside it. This is also nice because if you drop one, it usually falls onto the tray. You can put it back in your seed container, or if you miss the hole, just put it in the hole. And they're not dropping in the soil, and you can't find them. The soil is definitely dry on top, but underneath, you can see it's definitely got moisture to it still. So just going to make sure I give it a nice water. That's why the mulch is nice because it keeps that moisture in the soil a lot longer. Next, we're going to start some lettuce. This is some romaine lettuce. And now looking on the chart, it is saying lettuce is four, but these are little small heart of romaine. So I'm going to do the yellow. Kind of funny. I was just saying, oh, I'm going to follow the rules. And the next thing I'm doing is not following the rules. But I mean, it's just using your common sense. It's knowing what the rules are and why they're there and then knowing when you can kind of break or stretch it. So these lettuce seeds, I don't know if you can see, they are very tiny. Where's the camera? Come on. Oh, there we are. Maybe you can see them? Yeah, they're very, very small. So when I'm tapping them, I'm just giving them a very, very gentle tap <laughs> because they don't, falling off very easily. And a lot of times with lettuce packets, you get lots of lettuce seeds because I've known from saving my own lettuce seeds is you get a lot of seeds from one thing of lettuce. I'm putting a few per hole just because they are very small and I'm not sure if they're going to get washed away or whatnot if we do get some rain. And also with this method that I'm doing, how I'm just applying the soil on top, for these ones, I'm just going to sprinkle a very light layer of soil. Whereas for, say, the spinach ones, which were a little bit bigger, I put a thicker layer of soil on there. So these lettuce seeds don't need to be planted very deep. So I'm just going to put a very light layer of soil on top. And then they should be good to sprout. These are some seeds I picked up at the seed swap, a red romaine. I'm going to try these. We do like our red romaine lettuce. And these seeds are coming out at the top. <laughs> I'm going to try to get them. Kind of back at the bottom of this package here. Just gonna rip a little bit. There we go. Again, I guess that's where this little tool is gonna come in really handy because you can just get all those lettuce seeds. Now, because these were saved, I don't know the germination. I don't. I'm just gonna put a whole bunch in. Just because you never know. Honestly, lettuce, from my experience, my saved lettuce seeds do really, really well. So hopefully those ones will grow because we really do like that red romaine. You would think it'd be bitter, being like that reddish, but it wasn't bitter at all. It was almost a little bit sweet. Again, I'm not sure it was a different brand, something I bought from a store. And I'll just put a light layer of soil back on top there. Oops. <laughs> Give it a nice good pat. And then I'm not going to forget to water everything once we're done planting. Next up, we're going to plant some of this Verona Red Radicchio, I believe it's pronounced. I think I pronounced it Radicchio last year and someone did correct me. And now I still can't remember what the real pronunciation, pronunciation is. But that's okay. It's delicious. I had it in a salad at a store once and then I really wanted to grow it. I did not have the greatest success last year. I didn't really get any of these nice, but kind of just like little cabbages. But I did get a few little leaves, so hopefully this will grow better this year. I just have these little dividers that my husband made me last year, and they work really well for just dividing in between the crops that I'm growing. Because there, that was the last that I planted there. And then over here, I am going to plant some carrots. 
in this kind of open section and then I'm going to do a little bit something else on the end. For my carrots I'm not going to use the seeding square. It says to use the 16 holes which I'm sure would work great but because carrot seeds are super super tiny and they can be really hard to germinate what I'm actually going to do is just do what's called chaos carrots and you just kind of throw them all over the surface and that way they can kind of germinate and then what I like to do is as they grow I will thin them and get little baby carrots so instead of having in this section what would have given me 32 carrots, I might have maybe 32 big carrots, but I'll also get 60 baby carrots. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and sprinkle it just like salt. I mean, this probably uses a little bit more carrot seeds than you normally would use, but carrot seeds are pretty abundant, so I'm not too worried about that. We'll just sprinkle those up. And then what I'm going to do with the soil, just going to do the same thing with the soil and just sprinkle it all on top. And the one thing with this is you can, some people will put like boards down. I might put a piece of cardboard after I water it, of course, put a piece of cardboard on top just to keep that even moisture in there until they germinate. Again, you're going to want to check it every few days after the first few days. And hopefully we'll get a big batch of carrots from right here. Okay, and then lastly, I think just along this edge right here, I'm going to be planting some rainbow Swiss chard. I, we're not really huge fans of chard. We don't eat a lot of it, but it grows really well here, and we eat a little bit of it, and this rainbow stuff looks pretty cool. I'm planting a whole bunch here, as you can see, but I will probably only need two plants here. I just like to plant a lot of seeds, apparently. You can also grow them, like, really small justify it that way and I got a bit more soil here so we're just going to sprinkle the rest of that soil over top nice pat down first planting of seeds in the garden for 2024 we've got peas and radishes and leafy greens and carrots we're actually only three weeks to our average last frost date normally I would plant these things for even sometimes six weeks before but we've had a pretty cold spring so I'm not too worried about getting them in the ground a little later. With the nice weather we have coming, they're going to sprout really well. But it's still cool enough that it's not going to be like they're going to bolt in the heat of the summer. You often hear up here in Canada, wait until after May long weekend to plant anything in your garden. But I really think that you lose out on a lot of things when you do that. We have a lot of things growing up on their own. And these other cool weather crops really like this weather. So go ahead and get those planted. And if you're interested in that seeding square, I'll link that below. It's actually been a really fun tool. And my kids even really like to play with it. It's kind of like a toy in the garden. And honestly, I think it's a fun toy to play with in the garden too. And stay tuned to watch these sprout as well as see some transplants go right into the garden soon. And lots of other little seedlings are being up potted. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.